So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology, iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, they're average now. Now let me explain why this is, when I say average, I'm talking in the context of normal, standard iPhone, it's pretty basic here in 2020. Now this video is not an attack on already iPhone 7 owners, this is just saying if you're looking for an iPhone now and you pick one of these up, it's probably not a bad idea if you're on a tight budget, but they're still pretty basic at this point. Let me explain why. The IP ratings number one was a big deal with these phones back in 2016 when these came out, that they were now able to get a little bit wet. Uh, that's not really a big deal anymore as most phones offer this is pretty much expected here in 2020. So having this IP rating doesn't really make this anything more than average at this point. Next up is that aluminum body. Yes, it's very thin and light on the iPhone 7. Not a lot of phones are this thin and light, but the actual materials are pretty standard. We see budget phones at 100, 200 bucks with aluminum bodies like this. Also, these bezels are even thicker than some of those 100 or 200 dollar Android phones. So the bezels just look pretty old at this point. And the phones themselves, they do have a rather standard build. Again, this video is not trying to make these sound like bad phones. These aren't bad phones whatsoever. They're still really good phones. I'm just saying they're pretty average, at least by comparison to the other iPhones and even some cheaper Android phones these days. Next up is the displays. They're pretty much average at this point as well. We have LCD displays on here. They are Retina, which is just Apple's marketing for 326 PPI and above, so you don't see any pixels on display. But how many phones can you name that you can actually see pixels on these days? Most phones have pretty sharp displays as manufacturers have figured out, well, these people are looking at their phones all day long. We might as well make those displays sharp. So you're going to see, you know, many phones are really sharp displays. So this to me is no real benefit. Now, what is still kind of unique about these phones is this 3D touch. You don't find this on a lot of devices. So that's not really average. And the fact that these can go up to 625 nits of brightness here in 2020, is uh, that's not average. A lot of phones don't get that bright. However, the actual display itself, the resolution, stuff like that, LCD panel, there's nothing really special about it. And for software, you can see iPhone 7 Plus actually preparing its update right now. And I also have one here for the iPhone 7. These phones do feature the latest iOS 13 versions. Now, they also should be updated for quite some time as well going forward because Apple released an iPad last year with this A10 Fusion. So I don't see them discontinuing support anytime soon on these. So we should see 14 on here. And it's not really average to see a phone with getting software updates. So I can't call it average in software updates, but the software itself, if you compare it to other iPhones, it's just basically standard iOS here on both phones. Now, when it comes to performance, I do believe that the performance on the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus is actually a bit better than average. There's a reason why Apple launched that iPad uh, last year, the 10.2 with this A10 Fusion. It's still a pretty snappy CPU and it's faster than a lot of other CPUs on the market. So day to day performance, you're really gonna be pretty happy with an iPhone 7 or 7 Plus and I wouldn't really call them average here, but I'm kind of adding up all the things about the phone that are average and basically calling them average. This is just not one of them. So performance, I cannot honestly say is average, but it's still average when you compare it to the A11, A12, A13, any of the newer iPhones, but industry-wide, it's actually still quite good. Now the storage on these phones are definitely average with a max storage capacity of about 256 gigs on here. This one's a 256 gig. Now a lot of phones can go up to 512 gigs these days, one terabyte these days. So 256 gigabytes is nothing to, to brag about, basically. You can also expand the memory on plenty of other competitors, which can bring you way up in the storage and you could also swap it out. So uh, it's not that impressive to have a max option of 256 gigs in 2020. However, that's still plenty of storage for most people. Okay, so next up is the cameras, both pretty average here in 2020. Now I'm gonna show you a couple samples in a minute here, but a single lens camera here, this is pretty par for the course for Apple here. Back in 2016, most phones were single lenses, but the 7 Plus was one of the first dual lens cameras to go mainstream, and it was pretty awesome at the time. However, neither of these do have any smart HDR features. They look pretty terrible at nighttime, and their front-facing cameras on both of them aren't the best when it comes to making video, as it can only go up to 
1080. Another limitation with the iPhone 7 series is that it didn't have a wide front facing camera. So when you are taking selfies, you had to back up or get a selfie stick. These days, a lot of the newer phones have like a little feature where you can pop it out and go a little bit wider to get more people in that shot. And there probably is software that can help you out with that. But at the same time, these cameras are just not super impressive in 2020. Now, I will say the video is still quite good on the rear cameras of both of these. You could get away with this pretty easily making videos on these. However, just the sheer you know hardware on these phones for the cameras, just not very impressive here. It's pretty average in 2020. Even a lot of budget phones have really stepped up the camera game. But I'll take a look at some of my samples and let me know where you think these stand now that is 2020. And so let's talk about the audio, the stereo speaker performance. Are these average here? And I would say yes, just because this is not anything really new here in 2020. Once again, if you do play a video, you know, you're going to have a pretty good speaker performance on these, but it's not like other phones don't offer that now. So it's pretty standard to see stereo speakers on a phone in 2020. And these phones kind of pioneered the get rid of the headphone jack thing that made a lot of people angry. But at the same time, a lot of other phones have followed in their footsteps and now they don't have headphone jacks either. So that has forced manufacturers to put more stereo speakers on here so with that being said stereo speakers in 2020 is quite average have a listen for yourself help you decide if you should do this upgrade a lot of people put the upgrade off but then over time they see more reviews they, they start to get curious like i say they're still good speakers but and think should i do the upgrade well we're only seven months it's just nothing that impressive because many phones offer that same exact feature now. Now, phone call quality was actually quite good on the 7 if you got the Qualcomm modem. So Apple started to split between the Intel and the Qualcomm modems here in 2016. And if you got lucky, you got a Qualcomm modem, which had better reception and better phone call quality. For me, I did get the Qualcomm modem on both of these, so I got pretty lucky there. And uh, these were pretty good in that respect, even better than some of the newer iPhones. So they're not super average in the phone call quality, they're actually quite good there. Now, some other areas where these are still quite average is your Bluetooth performance. Bluetooth is a 4.2, we're now on 5.0, and with the U1 chip and the newer iPhones, even faster connected AirPods, things like that. Touch ID is pretty standard now. Face ID has become the norm. And also in display touch ID is next. So having a fingerprint sensor on the phone itself, while a lot of people absolutely love it, it's still pretty old at this point and pretty standard. Most phones have went away from the fingerprint sensor and now on facial recognition or in display fingerprint sensors. Here's the good thing. What's not average about these, it's actually below average is their price point. So if you do want a cheap iPhone, that's a very good option still. The 7 and 7 Plus are pretty good options. They're plenty fast. They got good cameras. They're not anything impressive, but they're still good cameras and they have good phone call quality. They also do have software support going forward. So if you're looking for a below average price point iPhone, you don't want to pay for the eight, this could be your pick. But in conclusion, I think if you want a little bit more of an improvement, you don't want to be super old phone. I do think the eight and eight plus are better offerings for you as they do have better battery life, better cameras, and they should be supported longer and they have better performance. So that's it for me. That's where the iPhone seven and seven plus stand in February of 2020. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Are you getting an iPhone seven or seven plus? Have you held on and you're upgrading this year? Let us know your experiences, your thoughts, concerns down below as people are still picking up these older iPhones. It really does help them out a lot. 
I will catch you all in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching and supporting this content. Be sure to be well and peace.